<laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2, guys. Me back, it's Delonye. And it's me, Nago. And I'm Zayko. And we're going up. I'm going up. Going up, up, up. Oh no, we angered him. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Crash, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise, Crash. I can't keep the data path open much longer. Crash, you need to go. Right, Speaking of Coco. Wait, what? Hi! She's back! I have two questions here. One, <laughs> was your b freaking laptop's battery almost dead? And two, how the flip did you get here? Speaking of, get your own battery, Coco! <laughs> Speaking of but batteries. yes, Coco's playable again in Crash 2. And I went to Snow Business, as you can see, there is a gym platform, so we can't really do anything here. So we're gonna leave this level. And instead, we're gonna go to the one next to it. We're gonna go straight to Air Crash. But 13 planets? That, that doesn't wrong. make sense to me. It's never touched on in the series that there are 13 planets aside from Cortex mentioning that one line. But yes, Coco has the slide, the body slam, the crawl. She has all that stuff now. But we need to get the red gem if we're going to progress in snow biz. And you know, it's kind of weird how that platform right over there it doesn't have anything on it. Huh. Well, I'll be damper. It's a secret platform. Ooh, look at the secret warp room. And look, it takes us to the second level in the game, Snow Go. Interesting. Hmm. Don't see that. It's like it's magic. <laughs> oh wait, copyright reasons. Whoops, sorry guys. <laughs> I don't think Whoa. you humming is gonna make much of a difference. <laughs> well, I was about to sing the song, and you can all hear my pretty voice. Sing, serenade us. <gasps> yeah, no, I don't feel like. It. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Crash Two has secrets galore, and there are secret warp rooms everywhere, and they lead to all sorts of different secrets. Not even, not just color gems. They most of the time they lead you to regular gems, because Crash Two got a little carried away with the gem count. Instead of us having twenty six, there are forty two gems in this game, which is a lot. Yes, but can I compliment this remix of this Death Route theme? A lot of people are very subjective on how they feel about the soundtrack in the Insane Trilogy compared to the original. For me, most of the songs are really good. Some of them are kind of ear sores. But that's mostly songs in Crash 3 in my opinion. But I mean, you also do have to admit, this game is not the original yeah. that it was. It's, it's still so. a shame that they didn't get Josh Mansell, the original composer, back for this. And they remixed his stuff without really so much as consulting him. It's kind of a shame. But I think that some of these remixes are honestly better than his original work. Not that Josh Mansell is a bad composer, I flipping love him. He's amazing. But some of these remixes, in my opinion, are just so much better. Like this one in particular, I love this Death Route theme way more than I liked it in the original game. It's got more power, I or suppose. But look, but now finish. we can get the red gem from Snowgo. In the PlayStation 1 game, you could actually see the red gem as you play through the level, and with a well-timed slide spin jump topped with a body slam, you could get it early. 
But they knew about that, so they put it all the way up at the top of the tunnel this time, so you couldn't do that. But now that we have the red gem, we can actually properly play Snow Biz. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, let's go. The first Take two. Technically one, but yeah. Yep. First time in this game. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not or if I'm correct, it's not going to be the last time. Either. Oh no, we've got a little bit of backtracking to do. Still. But, like I said, I think that this game handled the backtracking pretty well. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like it overwhelms. It seems very... How do I put this? It's very, uh, well thought. Streamlined? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very streamlined. But now we can take the red jet and platform up here. We. And we get to hear the music again. Because I love it. You know, as soon as Aku, Aku shuts up. Don't touch the porcupines, Coco. That's going to hurt your butt. You'll be pulling things out for weeks. <laughs> you think getting your laptop battery is already going to be hard enough? I don't know how I didn't get hit by the radius of the explosion there. But I'm not complaining because... <laughs> Magic hitboxes. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Yeah. Like in Crash 1. <laughs> I guess you can say they're hit or miss. That time. Oh, that time, that time I deserved that. I got reckless. You was being too uh, cocky for you. Cokey. <laughs> I'm not funny at all. <laughs> you try. You try hard. No sneak that gives you A for hit. I don't know how I got hit by that. Very careful. But I did. Again, like the hitboxes are very hit for this. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's a real knee slapper. No. <laughs> Wee. Crash 2 doesn't really rely on 2D very much. There's hardly, if at all, any level that is strictly 2D. I'm pretty sure they only save it for the optional pass and the bonus rounds. Every level is basically a 3D level. That's a little sad, if I'm gonna be honest. I'm actually quite happy with that idea. Especially with the new analogs. Yeah, because Crash 1, like I said, I do think that the Crash 1 formula worked best in 2D. But I could also say that there was a little too much 2D for my liking. Considering it was a game that was trying to be 3D when 3D was still in its heyday brand new, mm. Crash 2 capitalized on it and made the 2D still there, but at least it was specifically for optional areas. I like the idea of the levels being 3D and all the optional stuff being 2D. Wow! But that's that little bonus round. Woo. And it's all so you can get extra crates. It's not to get a gem or anything, it's just to make sure that you can get all the crates. Because otherwise you would have had to come back after you had completed the red gem route. So that's why I decided to show off Air Crash first, because that's where you get the red gem. And I try to make the I try to go through these levels in the most authentic way possible that'll make a playthrough the most streamlined. Right. Because at least at least in Crash 2, unlike Crash 1. You actually have the option to go to levels in whatever order you want for that respective warp room. And Ooh. there's one of Coco's death animations. <laughs> Just into the laptop. I like how they added the sparking from the mm -hmm. laptop. Mm -hmm. Crash's death animation is different. It's where his um, his head gets smashed and you see his head on his shoes and it walks around. Uh, they actually cut that from the Japanese version of Crash 2 on PlayStation 1 because uh, the timing could not have been worse. There was a killer going around in Japan cutting people's heads off and leaving only their head on their shoes. So they had to change that animation. Oh my god. god. So what they did to compromise it was they just made Crash go completely flat. The timing of that could not have been worse. <laughs> no. Yeah. I have a feeling it was an inside job. Uh, <laughs> that would make you quite the naughty dog. <laughs> Speaking of naughty dog, while Coco's here, during the opening cinematic, did you guys see what was on her laptop screen? No. She was watching Uncharted 4. Oh my god. And the meteor? In the opening cinematic of the game, mm -hmm. when we were in the space station, it had the Naughty Dog logo on the meteor. 
<laughs> so at least they're paying homage. Oh, oh. I knew that reference to Crash Bandicoot not and uh, Uncharted 4 was there for a reason. Oh, it's a very, very smart Easter egg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like the way that they handled crystals in this game. They look so pretty, and I love how they leave off this purple aura. It's a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. They give it an actual lighting. Mm -hmm. And whenever you pick it up, it goes away. So that's how you know it's there. Oh, and I should also mention... Crash 1 only had one level that had over 100 crates in it, and that was Jaws of Darkness. Crash 2 <laughs> has a lot of levels in which you, you get to see over 100. Also, Coco has her own variation of the Crash Dance, and it's adorable. It's cute. But they're all in the same. Yep. That's really <laughs> But now we're in Air Crash for the proper way. The true Air Crash. We'll play this level authentically now. It's time to do the right thing. While we're on the topic of that, um, you might remember that in Crash 1, most of the level themes were repeated only twice. Mm -hmm. uh, Crash 3, Whoa! most of the level themes, except for like a save a few, you will get to see them up to three times. Which... Yeah, it's alright, because they're really, really beautiful. At yeah. least every time it's different. But this is the second river level. There's a third river level, too. Sadly, so it's gonna Which look is kind of nice, because you get to experience more of specific levels that you really, really Which like. Which is a complaint that I had in Crash 1, is that I felt like some of the really good ones were only seen twice, and I would have liked to see them expand on. Well, Crash 2 did just that for me. It expanded on it. And then Crash 3 decided to go a little overboard and make level themes show up to four times, and then they got a little freaking crazy with it. But we're not at Crash 3 yet, we're at Crash 2. <laughs> Getting there. Slowly. I'll get there, I promise. But uh, at the time of this recording, I'd like to correct something I stated a while ago. There was a, I mentioned in the Slippery Climb level run on Crash 1 that there was a scrapped level called Stormy Ascent, which was the second level themed like that. And it was cut from the original game. It was still in the coding, but it was cut because it was too difficult. At the time of this, that level has been completely remade thanks to Vicarious Visions and is now available on PlayStation Network until I believe it is August 5th or the 8th for free, and then it'll be $3. So get it while you can, guys. Yep. I have not played it yet. At the time of this recording, I have not recorded that. I intend to record that as a bonus episode for the Crash 1 Let's Play, but I have not gotten around to that just yet. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, at the time of you recorded Crash 1, you didn't know it was going to come out. There was, there was, uh, kind of. I kind of knew it was because there was a leaked trophy section called the Lost Treasures, and there was a trophy icon that looked like the little enemy that does the grabbing hand through the cage bars. So, of course, I thought that was going to be Stormy Ascent. But I also thought we were getting more than Stormy Ascent because the trophy thing said Lost Treasures, as in plural, mm. and it's just one level. So I'm kind of hoping that they're going to bring the other Scrap Crash 1 levels in later on. Hopefully. Because that would be really nice, because there, there wasn't just two Scrap levels. I completely forgot that they had, like, two other ones that were hardly even in the development stages, but there were about four Scrap levels from Crash 1, I would love to see all of those come back. Oh, that would be really, really nice. Yep. Here's our secret second white gem, and instead of- there's no way to really get back, so I decided to kill myself, just so I could put myself back on the main path. Because otherwise the warp room would've just- it, it would- we would have to play the level another time, break all the crates again, I just wanted to get everything in once. Yeah. Basically make your life a lot easier. If I have two Aku Akus, I tend to not want to kill myself, but because I didn't really have much of another option on how to get out of the level, it was the only thing I could do. Sadly, but truly. And you gotta do some really difficult platforming here if you want to get those crates. Which I'll say, depth perception. I will say that Crash 2 handles the depth perception a whole lot better than Crash 1, because oh. the camera angles are usually adjusted in a way that you can actually see things better. Crash 1... Not so much. Crash 2 just, like here, I like how it's at an upward angle, so it makes viewing the platforms a lot easier. 
And it's not like a complete overhead view. It's still enough to see in front of you while still seeing over you. Again, I think that oh, Crash 2 just does a lot of things better than Crash 1. And I like how I, I, I also realized I still couldn't get the box gem. Because there's... 102. Yeah, there's another way we have to go about doing this. So yes, I still screwed that up in the end. But, whatever. I'm still done with the level. We'll come back here later. I still got one of the gems. I just remember... I was very upset that I lost those Aku Aku masks for nothing. Yeah, pretty much. But it's whatever. It's it's all good. It's all good. No, Demonye. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She, she doesn't do the same thing. She goes, ha <laughs> Close enough. But anyways, we switched to Crash because this level will require Crash. And there's a little polar bear right there. Come at me, PETA. I dare you. <laughs> and yes, I am bouncing on him intentionally for a reason you'll see in a second. <laughs> wow. He gives you 10 lives if you bounce on him. That is a thing from the original game, too. You actually get a trophy if you do that to him in this game. Whoop. Oh my god. Sue me, Peter! But guys, the hog lives on! As and he's small bear. and adorable! And fluffy. Very, very fluffy. And I'm gonna die a lot on this, I'm not gonna lie. Because... Polar is not that easy to control in the remake. I mean, it's not that it controls badly. Like, I missed the box there. Gotta kill myself. Dang it. <laughs> but, like... And I don't know what happened there. But the controls are very different from the original, so you have to adjust to it. Are it's they, difficult. Are they a bit slicker? I want to say they're more tight now. I feel like he controlled a little more loosely in the original, and you just... You're so used to how it controls that getting used to the new one isn't as easy. The hog, I adjusted to that pretty easily because I think it controls better. I'm not saying that Polar controls terribly in this remake, but I'm saying he controls differently. And it's enough to make a difference that it throws me off on the controls a lot. I still enjoy these levels. It just takes a lot of getting used to. Whoa, boom. Hey, it's short. There's an example of... Yeah, it's a little their finicky. Inst their instant explosions. And there's your explosions. Explosion! <laughs> yeah, it's a little finicky. Um, out of all the polar bear levels, I I don't think I play any of them flawlessly, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Unlike the hog level, where I actually played through the first one without any so much as trouble. But that's that level. It's really short. It's fun. I still think I kind of like the hog levels more, personally. We seem a little bit better. Yeah. Better put together. It's some opportunity. Darn. Darn it. Kill me, Matt. I'll see you later, Polar. Never again, I hope. Nah, no, we'll see him. Maybe. We'll see him a few more times. Polar's a standing character. You'll see him in a few other games, too. Mm-hmm. I think he's in Crash 3, right? But here's another animation with Crash. Yeah, he's in the opening in Crash 3, but he's not playable in Crash 3. Sadly. Because they replaced Crash, uh, not, they replaced Crash riding Polar with, uh, Coco riding Para. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I never really liked the Polar Bear. Because of CTR. <laughs> he was a jerk. He would intentionally, like, come after me. I don't know if his coding was specific to go after the player or whatnot, but every single time. You just come after me. I don't know. You came after me with a vengeance too. I'm like, I didn't do anything to you. You know, I'm kind of worried about Let's Play and Crash Team Racing. Because I oh, feel man. like the moment that I do the original game, they're going to announce that a remaster is coming out too because people are demanding it, just like they're demanding Spyro. And I feel like the moment I so much as put a Let's Play of the classic PlayStation 1 game on there, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, by the way, we, uh, we made the game on the PlayStation 4. And I'm gonna be like, son of a goat! <laughs> right there was a fork in the road. Yep, but this one's different. At least you're running towards yeah. the camera. Yeah, which is really, really nice. Yeah, and thankfully they have this little platform and it takes you right back to it. Where you're supposed to be. Yep. 
Very nice little thing right there. So you don't have to backtrack. So they broke up the head. norm on the boulder chase level there by having you go against the camera. Uh, not against the camera, sorry, going back. Working with the camera. Instead yeah, instead of going it. against it. But yeah, now Coco has her own little animations for running from the boulders too. Pretty I sure still, they, her eyes are very Pretty small. sure that was, I, I played as Coco in one of the boulder chase levels in Crash 1. I think I did. I think so. Yeah, oh, yep. but it's a lot more pro it's a lot more noticeable here. The animations where they keep looking back and running around, and stumbling, they're a lot more present in Crash Two than they are in Crash One. They weren't even in the original Crash One. Crash just kept running, so they added them in the remake to make it more cute. Which again is another attention to detail right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because even comparing the PlayStation One games, Crash One feels the most out of place compared to the second and third game because the second and the third game run on the same engine. Whereas Crash 1's on is like a completely different one. So at least in the case of this game, all three of them are running on the same engine, so everything stays consistent, so it doesn't feel like anything is out of place. So thank you for that, Vicarious. Good on your part. Good on you, mate! Oh no. This is Crash, not Ty. Yeah, but Crash is an Australian creature. He's a bandicoot. Yes. Wherever the heck a bandicoot is. It's, uh, it's a little adorable little thing. It doesn't look like what Crash looks like. A lot of question mark boxes. Yep. Those always give you the nicest rewards. It's kind of random what it gives you. It either gives you a bunch of Wampa or sometimes it gives you a Wana. It's usually Wampa, though. Oh, and... Damn. The speed boost kind of like takes your control away for a minute, so reacting to that was kind of out of my control because I had no time to react by the time that I realized. It's like a lag, kind of. Yep, and I hate this. I hate this. This makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah. That makes me so uncomfortable every single time. Yeah, that's a little... That's a little too close there. Yeah, that's a little too close for comfort. That was a close shave. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, is Coco missing any hair on her back from how close that boulder was to her? I don't know. But of course it is. If her laptop just turned into a diamond, why does she need another? How does she get another one? Good question. Could she use that diamond to, uh, you know, buy like five million batteries? Shine back like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, here's a new level theme, and this is one of my favorite level themes in Crash 2. The sewers. These levels look gorgeous. I remember when they showed off gameplay for this, the dude who was commenting on it just spent like a good 45 seconds to a minute just talking about how the water just weighs as Crash goes through it. It's like, they really want you to know how much love and care they put into the water. <laughs> I like the lighting though. The lighting in this is especially nice looking. It looks really, really smooth. I've noticed that more people are complaining lately about how the lighting doesn't always work with Crash's fur, and this stuff actually bothers them. But personally, I like it. And nitro boxes. I find it kind of weird that there's a bunch of nitros in here. I feel like, I feel like they're here for a reason. Like they're trying to prevent me from doing something. Hmm. Huh. Uh, I wonder why. I wonder. You can't just leave nitros in a room and not expect somebody to explore the room. Hopefully not killing themselves at the same time. Yeah, that, that'd be... That, that's a thing that I've seen happen before. So, secret area. Ah, what? That's a big secret area. That water. That so scared me. <laughs> so misleading. I'm pretty sure it goes without saying. Don't get in the water when the eel is electrocuting it. But we got our third colored gem already. Woo. We're halfway there and we're only in the second warp room. Wow, that was a really shocking experience. Uh oh. Haha, <laughs> Anna, do something stupid. Ah! <laughs> Good thing Uncle Goku's around. Thank goodness. Another shocking experience. Haha, <laughs> that was electrifying. I don't have a funny quip. Oh no. <laughs> Let's zap him. No! <laughs> it's a shame none of these levels are static enough. Oh my god. <laughs> This, this is getting stimulating. 
How shocking. I can already see it right now. <laughs> I can see it right now. Haley's watching this episode, and she's just sitting there, rubbing her thumb and her index finger along the bridge of her nose, letting out an elongated sigh in disgust at these puns, while Alicia is sitting there, clapping her hands, slapping the table, and laughing in her adorable manner that she always cracks me up with. <laughs> Did I guess right, girls? Did I guess right? Leave your comments down below. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you see what Crash did there where he like bounced back and adjusted himself? Mm -hmm. They added that in this. I don't really know why. Maybe. Because it wasn't needed. In the original, you could stand anywhere on the platform and it'd take you away. It's just weird. Maybe it's to orient for Franklin things. Maybe. But if it's not broken, don't fix it. But yeah, this, this level also has a lot of branching paths, but the branching paths are short, and they don't really make you fight across the camera too much, so this one isn't one of those backtracking levels that I was complaining about. Yeah. This a lot one's, of nitro boxes. This one's actually pretty damn harmless. I don't know how touching that eel didn't hurt me, because I'm pretty sure in the original game, if you touched them, it hurts you, and I also remember you could spin them, but it didn't work there. It's weird. I don't know. I don't understand. Oh, another thing that people were complaining about was the, the belly flop animation. They said it was taking too long. Well, I'm sorry. How is it not? How is it supposed to be fast? I mean, I don't think it's quite as fast as the original, but it's not that much of a delay that it bothers me. Mm -hmm. It's an animation. You're supposed to enjoy what it looks like instead of complaining. Uh, well, I can understand why people would complain whenever they're trying to get through levels as fast as possible. But it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers other people because... You don't have to body slam on too much stuff. Right. You hardly ever have to do it. And the only time that it really bothered me was during that boulder chase level. That yeah. scares me! Because I can fail you. Yes! And then you gotta do everything all I have again. flubbed that up so many times in the original, it's not even funny. I... Mm, I don't think I've ever flawlessly ran through that section without getting hit. I don't know how I did in the PlayStation 4 version of my first try, but I did, and I'm not complaining. Nope. It's skill. But that's the last level for this warp room. The real eel deal. Which is awesome. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. But first, a word from our sponsor, Dr. Neo Periwinkle Cortex. After the dance. Yes. Always gotta have wow. da -da -da. <laughs> 10 of 25 crystals. You're on your way. I'm running low on power, so communication from this point will be difficult. I don't understand what you just said! What? Anyways, boss two, the Komodo brothers. Oh, these guys are definitely new. Yep. Ripper is the returning boss, but Crash 2 brought in three new characters altogether. And the Komodo brothers boss fight is different. Laughably easy. So you have to hit both of them in order to damage one of their mm -hmm. health bars. You gotta hit the small one whose name is Joe and have him ricochet right into the big one named Mo. It's a really easy boss fight, honestly. This is probably the easiest boss in the game. Mostly because you really don't have to do much. Right. It's over faster than Ripper Roo. Then again, Ripper Roo did have you have to walk around and dodge him a lot. Also, don't touch those swords when they're in the ground. That does count as hit damage. But they're already done. That was really easy. <laughs> but that's the end of that boss fight. So in the next episode, we will take on the third warp room and gather more crystals and gems and all the happy jarrow stuff. So we'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.